My name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine. And I have started my YouTube channel directly after the brutal invasion of Russia. And I continue vlogging every day to update you on the war situation in Ukraine. But I want you to feel that Ukraine is not limited to war. And for you to feel and connect with Ukraine better, I want to introduce you to a beautiful cultural heritage of my country. If you want to discover Ukraine, subscribe and learn more together with me. I love ancient history. Sometimes it's even more interesting than myths and legends. If you want to know more about the history and peoples who lived on the territory of modern Ukraine back in the times of antiquity, we have to talk about Scythian and Sarmatians. And that's what we are going to do today. These are nomadic tribes that lived on the territory back from the Don River up to the Danube River, beginning from the 7th century before Christ and up to the 3rd century Anno Domini. Luckily, we know a lot about their lifestyle and traditions because of ancient Greek authors like Herodotus. Why? Because Scythians were in active trade and cultural relations with ancient Greeks. They were known as successful warriors, especially bowmen and horse riders. As I have already mentioned, Scythians were allies to ancient Greeks, and many of their cities were located close to the colonies of ancient Greeks. That's why Persian king Darius wanted to fight with them to stop Scythians from providing Greeks with bread. Traditionally, Ukraine was always a bread basket of the world. But Scythians were good warriors and they've managed to stop Darius and their victory led to a serious development of Great Scythia that started in 5th century BC. For more than 200 years, Scythians were enjoying the development of their Great Scythia. But decline always comes. And the causes for this decline were climate change that led to poorer harvests of bread and pressure from neighboring tribes of Sarmatians. Slowly, Scythians were pressed to leave and settled in Crimea. Their society, described in ancient Greek works, was divided into royal Scythians that practiced more aristocratic lifestyle and lived close to Greek colonies. Then Scythian nomads that were traveling the steppe and Scythian farmers that were living closer to the center of Ukraine. We know a lot about the style and jewels of Scythians because of their graves. They were constructing high mounds which resemble hills but actually had a very complicated construction. And Scythian kings and queens and warriors were buried with all the belongings they might need in future. As a result, we have access to extremely interesting exhibits made of gold and precious jewels. For example, a famous Scythian pectoral. I am trying to wear something similar. Scythian pectoral was found back in 1971 in one of such mounds known as Tosta Mohila. This golden collar, traditionally known as golden pectoral, was created in 4th century before Christ by a Greek goldsmith, but it describes typical scenes of Scythian life. What is more important, it was recently all over the news, an exhibition of Scythian gold that traveled the world at the moment of annexation of Crimea and previously belonged to the Crimean Museum, will return to Ukraine. After the annexation of Crimea, Russians wanted to take these exhibits back from the Netherlands, where they temporarily stayed. But recently, the Supreme Court of the Netherlands agreed that these treasures will return back to where they belong, that is, to Ukraine. By the way, Demosphen, a famous Greek author and orator, was actually of the Scythian origin. Many of them assimilated in different societies. And when the decline came, they were slowly substituted by Sarmathians. Sarmathians are not very different from the Scythians. They spoke very similar, if not the same, language, kept traditions and believed that they are ancestors, sons of 
Amazon women and Scythians. Because of that belief that they were ancestors of great warriors, women warriors, Amazonkas, many of them respected women a lot and they were totally equal in Sarmatian society. They were warriors, they were queens, and I think that's an important fact which tells a lot about the strength of Ukrainian women. Sarmatians were friends, if it's possible to say so, with Greeks and ancient Romans. They cooperated and fought together. They were known as good horse riders and many of them were hired by ancient Rome to serve as soldiers. And some of them traveled even to Britain. According to one legend, King Arthur was actually of the Sarmatian origin. He was taken to the Romans, brought up, served in the Roman army, then liked the British people and became an extremely successful ruler and might have been a Scythian by origin. <laughs> We know that peoples do not disappear. Within centuries, Scythians and Sarmatians were assimilating to different tribes that lived on the territory of Ukraine, and definitely we have some of their blood in us, because we are good warriors. Russians wanted to steal Scythian treasures. They want to steal our history, but they cannot. Because history is not limited to exhibits. It is in our hearts, in our mind, and in our character. Subscribe to Discover Ukraine together with me. Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons, and supporting projects like this.